Welcome one, welcome all. I am Bridger, and we are back. Round number two, we made it through a whole round without the Ottomans declaring war on us, and I have to say, didn't expect that. I <laughs> thought we'd have a lot more trouble. So let's start with the second round. We get to reveal some events. We know our event will not be mixed in here, but maybe if we can take... Huh. What? This is an Ottoman event, but it doesn't have an Ottoman ruler. Is it explicitly for this scenario? And it would not be listed in any other Ottoman scenario? They know that this is only ones with bots? So, if so, I gotta take this early and make sure it happens, because the Ottomans go to war with Venice. Uh, that's amazing. Um, and then the, the the Pope might call a crusade on the Ottoman area? Wow. Okay. Yeah, I want A to be a thing. Honestly, even the Ottomans want A to be a thing. Only the Venetians don't want A to be a thing. What else do we have? We have Venice with their own event. Adds unrest to Brescia, Verona, and all towns on Milanese cores. And Venice would normally pick A. Venice gains a claim on Lombardy in an alliance with Mantua. Interesting. And their leader would normally come in ill. Ugh. All right, lost Twitch here. There's the Twitch chat. It's back. You're at war once the war token is placed. <laughs> There's people arguing about our, our debate over whether this, you know, why I would be able to call Poland into a war. That's right. The very first thing I do here has to be, for the purposes of this game, I'm probably going to make a lot of mistakes on my, on my play. So I'm going to allow myself this liberty, even if it's quite a little bit wrong. I'm going to get myself an alliance with Poland. There we go. Alliance secured, and I'm going to assume that it, that I can call them in because their vassal is adjacent. That might not be correct. There's a couple different ways to read it. We don't have an official ruling, but for the purposes of this particular scenario, that seems like the right call. Now, I have to figure out what I'm going to do later. I want to force A. If the Venetians get this, they will do B instead. They would lose a claim adjacent to the Aegean Sea. That's also good, but I need them to fight each other. This needs to be that scenario, not scenario, but that needs to be this the 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 situation uh, with the Godzilla fighting like what? A, Let them fight. I actually didn't see that movie. Was that any good? I'm told it was good. Godzilla versus Mothra. Was that it? The 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 war of the monster. I don't remember. It was a big one from a while back. So, yeah, I grabbed my alliance with Poland as the very first thing I did, just in case the Ottoman card is a military card and it goes after me with that 50-50 shot. And instead it's diplomacy. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what you got, Diplo... Ottomano. So we had to see, do they have... They have the alliance with Karaman. That's right. I should have put this down here. And they'll be able to eat them too, so that's going to happen here. Uh, has doubled attacks? Yes. Has enough influence? Yes. Annex it and score three. Oh, God. It's just rocketing up there. And then they get both towns. And they get their alliance back. Um, does it now own all the provinces in the area? No. So it goes to end turn. Uh, where's my Twitch chat? There it is. Hello, Joes. Venetian army should go off the map due to not being at war and not having rebels. Last step of peace resolution. Thank you very much. Good point. 
Uh, let's see. That was the Ottoman annexing. Now it's up to Venice Bot. And because Venice Bot is not at war, it is going to pull a card. It also gets diplomacy. Huh. So they are going to do a similar thing, except we know they are probably going to annex. No, they can't annex Albania now because they lost the influence there due to a card effect? What was it that caused them to lose that influence? I don't remember. They should have also lost the influence in Ragusa when they declared war. I forgot to remove that. There was something that caused them to remove that influence there. But now they are probably going to place it right back. Um, so yes, this is a no. Select the highest, any free space. Yes, add to alliance possible. No, so we add to and then find out if they get a royal marriage. Oh, the first thing I could have done was to put some influence here to block them from doing that, but then they would have just stole mine. Oh, that's right. It was a call to arms. That's right. They use the call to arms for Albania. Thank you. Uh, so now we find out if they're going to get that royal marriage or place more influence. That is a royal marriage. With, uh, oh wait, they already have a royal marriage. Uh, interesting. Is that where it's supposed to go? Can oh, can enter royal marriage. So I should have just gone straight down here. Um, add two in areas where there's no influence. They're actually running out of influence. Prefer areas adjacent to bot. Um, probably Bosnia, because they can't fit any more here. So I would guess that would be where they where they go, because that's still adjacent to their capital. They could probably also do Italian stuff, but in this case, it makes a little more sense for them to try to gobble up stuff close to me and the Ottomans before the Ottomans get there. All right. So, to here, are they at peace and have six or more bot power left? Yes. Go to diplomatic target chart. Huh. So they didn't get a new alliance or a new royal marriage, and they have enough bot power, so they get to go again. Not fair. Roll for target, re-roll, same. So, a one is the Papal States. What do we do with that? Any free space in the areas? Yes. Does it have influence e less than target's tax income? Yes. Spend two more. See, that's the key. They got to spend more. Can't just let them spend none. So, oh, and then, uh, they add two to areas of the realm. So they go to the Papal States and they put that in there. And now can they annex the Papal States? I guess they could. There's a big disincentive to do so normally. So I don't know if the uh, there's some pro prohibit prohibition about Catholic bots wanting to annex the Papal States, but maybe not. All right, so they did three and then two, and they spent three and then two. I'm going to have to look up what happens when the bots run out of, because uh, there's so much more influence from Venice on the board than there is in that other game that I've been play that I've played before, Margrave. None of the bots never got that much influence on the board. I think they have it spread out a lot at the beginning. All right, that brings it back around to me. I've got my alliances secured. I want to get more money in case I have to get mercenaries. So I'm going to try and trade. I only have the one ship, but Constantinople is almost always chosen on the Black Sea nodes, I think. And if there's an Alexandria node, I don't have a ship down there, but I can still at least get the bottom feeding option. So let's see here. Uh, Ivory Coast, Baltic, no... Ooh, Black Sea. Ooh, dies is so much money! Oh, wow, this one's gonna be great. So, we have one for the merchant, one for the ship, 
and one for Constantinople. We don't have Tbilisi or Kaffa. Tbilisi, for some reason, way over here. Um, so we are going to get to collect from the 12, the, the second row. That is phenomenal. Uh, Hank, was there a mission where we had to get a certain amount of trade? No, six plus trade power. That wasn't six trade power. That was only three. We don't have enough boats for that. I could move a ship. I don't have any more ships. I have the one ship that's already in the, in the Black Sea. Now, you're right. I probably should move it to the Aegean. Right? Because if the bots pick Alexandria, then I've got a slightly better chance. And the Aegean is also next to the Black Sea. It's just a better place to keep your boats. That's what it comes down to. So, now, the Ottomans can also trade there. So, when humans trade, the bots are also allowed to trade on any node on the card, or maybe just in the specific node that I'm in. Uh, let's see. Recruit. Rebels. Other rules. The bot trading in the separate thing on this. No, it's not. I know where it is in the solar rose. I just hope I can find it in that particular... Um, uh, all right, so humans trading. In a maritime node, all bots gain two for main map nodes and three for distant nodes. Eligible bot realms may collect passive trade income. So in this case, the Ottomans can because they have a boat adjacent to the Black Sea. So they get two. And I got my money. Beautiful trade, all things considered. Oh, you know what? I never did. I never took my, my cards. Um, I was hoping... I had five stability. I was hoping to pick up a stability card. Let's, let's take a gamble on that. Nope. Commercial growth is good, though. Hey, you know, that's a good card. And what else? Might I need a Diplo card? No, I'm just going to take some more military cards. Oh, another superior tactics. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and I'm going to take another military card. And then I have to decide what to keep. Tactics, tactical retreat. Uh, that, that's a better general than my forced march. Because he only costs one military power to promote. But I don't know if he's worth paying two ducats to keep him. I think I definitely want to keep commercial growth. And I would love to have two of these. Right? The other thing is, this leader's... I think I want to keep all of them. I want to keep superior tactics, because having extra military battle dice is great. So use in any battle. Is this the one that lasts the whole battle? I think both of these last the whole battle. There are some battle things that only last for a singular round. And I think it's labeled differently. I'm just, I'm going to shuffle all these again. I'm just looking for like, yeah. Gain four battle dice of your choice in a land battle. No, I know there's something that's in a land battle. I think it's an it's 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 um military traditions rather than reforms. Is that the one that's different? Your enemy must remove two battle dice before a battle roll. That's the one that only applies to a single roll. All these other ones we're looking at say in the battle, and I think they last the entire battle. So the fact that I would have two battles with a very nice advantage in dice numbers, I really want to keep them all. Sea zones are weird on this map. So I think I'm going to pay six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another reason to have traded right off the bat, basically. Um, okay, now I've properly done my, uh, my starting thing. We still have to remember our missions here. Go to war <laughs> against them uh, as best we can. Okay, so that was my trade action. Now we're on to the Ottomans, who are still not at war, so they are still pulling another card. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, if they go to war right now, I'll gain a military power, 
which this is probably enough. I'll be able to call a bunch of allies. Well, when I say a bunch, I mean two. I would have preferred to get another ally, but getting uh, getting the poles on was very expensive. So, But it was action efficient. I got a lot more manpower for that. I keep... Okay, let's not jump ahead. They didn't even attack me yet. <laughs> I'm still panicked over here. At war, no. Has claim, yes. They have claim number one right here. <sighs> okay. Let's not panic. <laughs> These dice rolls, though. I need high dice rolls. Come on. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to get to the other tree. They're going to war with me. Oh, boy. And my army's not, like, I can't get ready. They're just going to march in and attack me, I think, before I can even build it up. All right, this is not going to go well. <sighs> All right, where's my... The good news is that I can also make sure the Venice bot is at war with them at the same time with uh, this card. If I take it next, um, the problem is they're probably going to siege down Constantinople before I can do that. Uh, or while I'm doing that, getting Venice in here. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. military actions. Uh Declare war. Pick target realms and place war tokens. Because I'm pretty sure uh, claim does match roll. Yes. Select realm for which this claim is valid. Prefer opponent than highest tax income. Does it have four or more in the realm? No. Is the target strength twice as much? No. So the Ottomans are going to raise their entire army. Which is eight. Eight actually isn't a lot. If I can get a few mercenaries and uh, some allies, I could probably crush them at least once. And they have to spend one to do that. So that is another bot power gone that they lose. I'd like to de-raise my army, please. Um, and then... Can, do they have allies they can call that are adjacent to me? No, they don't. They annex their ally. That's what you get. Uh... Okay, targets may send defensive calls to arms. So now I'm going to do that. So I'll send one to Poland. I don't actually have to remove an influence because I have the royal marriage. So I call them, and when I call an ally to war, if they are adjacent to the target, I get one military uh, power. And I get... Uh, Flipped it over, I gain allied units equal to um, half the tax value, maximum five. So in this case, I get five. In here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I get to do the same thing with my only other ally, Trezabond. Thank you, Trezabond. You're the best. I actually have eight military power. That's a good amount for to, to prosecute a war. And I get one more ally. So, you know, I've got seven. If I had time to actually combine them with my existing two, I would be in good shape. Instead, my navy's about to get sunk. Good thing I did the, the trade. That was actually good timing for me. DOW triggers naval battle, yes. But they're going to get to claim this as a victory and get an extra bot power themselves. Enemy is a player realm, yes. Bot is attacker. Facing multiple player realms, no. Human player may apply battle actions. No, I'm not going to use these in my navy. Humans do not roll dice. Ba bots will roll uh, one die plus one per adjacent ship. Uh, let's see. They have one adjacent ship. So they're going to roll two dice. Well, they missed, but they're going to get some automatic hits, I think. They score one hit per cannon rolled and treat every two adjacent bots, bot ports 
um, and every two NPR ships fighting on a bot side as extra cannons. So they definitely have, let's see, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven ports on the Aegean, so they would get enough hits to uh, wipe me out, I think, here. Bot versus bot, no. Human player must assign casualties. There weren't any admirals. Uh, so, the, yeah, they got three hits, and that wipes me out. Human player, ships left, no. Resolving bot gets one bot power for winning the battle. But that was kind of inevitable when they did declare war on me. That was going to happen. All right, so naval battle. Are there any land battles triggered? No. Is their army twice the size of the target? Yes, technically. Actually, no, because... Now they're eight, and my strength is technically available plus army. So there's that. Um, so the answer is no, but they also don't have any more manpower. So is army on board? No. Place army in own area closest to enemy, and that will trigger the battle because we're right on top of each other. And I mean, if I could survive around and let those guys retreat, that would be great. They don't actually have anywhere to retreat to. Do oh, no, they can go down here. It's all one big area up here. But, basically, we're going to get one round here. Um, oh, crap. I hit the wrong button again. Is it 20? Nope. 18. Not Poland bot either. 17. All right. Let's see if I can't keep hitting that in the wrong place. So, 6 is this. Enemies of player realm, yes. Bot is the attacker, yes. Human player may appoint a general. I'm a little bit hesitant to appoint a general to an army that's just going to die in one round. But I should consider it. Only because the general is going to add some more dice. You know it would be interesting? I could send the ruler out... And if he dies, I replace him with a better one from my hand, which I was planning on doing anyway. This is a better one to use as a combat general if I can give this guy to be the ruler of my country, because he comes with three military power a turn. So that's actually a solid choice. We're going to appoint Constantinos as our general and pray. <laughs> pray that he can do some damage. Um... Because we're in the main realm, so account for military ideas. I didn't get any military ideas. It would have been nice to get Tertios or Noble Knights here on the cusp of this, but that's too much bot. That's too much military power to give up for that. All right. Uh, human player may play battle actions. Not in this battle. I'm saving these for a battle where we actually have enough troops to take advantage of those dice. Humans roll normal. Bots roll five. All right. So I'm going to roll a total of five myself because I have three plus the two from Constantinos. This is my roll. I can get a maximum of two hits. I got two hits. And now the bots roll. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, you can miss. All miss. I've seen it before. No, nope, he got two hits, so he killed my army. Uh, and not enough to kill my general either, so there is that. Constantinos stays in play for a little bit longer, and I don't have to use this military power to bring him up. Hello, Greg. Welcome. Normally you play D&D. Well, welcome to Europa Universalis, The Price of Power. I played about 20 hours of a solo game of this, and that's how long it took me to really get this game. It's got a 48-page rulebook. This module, however, has a very nice searchable index. So you can click on it and take you to the right page. Uh, so right now, if you are interested in getting caught up, and for anybody else out there who's just joining us, I am playing as the Byzantine Empire circa 1465, 68, um, and the Ottomans, I'm purple, the Ottomans are at the door. Historically, the Ottomans sacked Constantinople in 10 years after this started, so I'm already ahead of the game, but they have just declared war on me. Uh, the 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 Byzantine Empire being the last vestiges of the Eastern Roman Empire. And the goal of this scenario called Rise of the Purple Phoenix is to sort of rebuild the, the Eastern Roman Empire. So, yeah, you're in for a ride. Welcome. 
So, we just had the first major battle in which my tiny army was crushed by the Ottoman army, but we have a bunch of allies and other things waiting in the wings here. So, uh, yeah, they can do their worst. Let's see. That was their trigger's land battle, and then that goes to end turn. So their turn is over, and now it's up to uh, Venice Bot to prove their mettle. Come on, event bot. Uh, pick an event. I dare you. Oh my god, it did. <laughs> it is on the workshop. Um, however, I am playing a version of the module that is still in development. The module that is on the workshop uh, is one that they used for playtesting, and it is pretty well featured, but this one is much better. So if you do... Uh, they do not get one bot power, uh, Joe. Uh, they got one bot power for winning the naval battle. They only get one bot power um, for the first battle that they win. And that is true of players as well. Players only get one military power for the first battle they win in a turn. Uh, but yeah, so the Aegir Discord. So if you search for Europe, we never saw its price of power. You'll probably find the Aegir website close to the top of the Google search results. Um Naval and land is separate, but it says gain one bot power if an enemy won a battle this turn. Uh, it is definitely only the first battle you win. Doesn't matter if it's the first land battle or the first naval battle. You'll notice resolving bot receives one bot power if first battle won this turn. That was true of the naval battle. Um, and that's also here. But that was not true of the land battle because the land battle came second. Note the one bot power gain for the first battle win in a turn for the resolving bot is, in most cases, already specified in the relevant bot action charts. It's just reminding you there. One per turn. So yeah, Greg, the, uh, the, this module is there, and it does all the different scenarios. There's a gajillion scenarios. This one is, I think, particularly difficult, but we're going to try it anyway because it's fun. So uh, where are we? Event! Oh boy! If Venice manages to pull this, it's going to suck. I actually just realized I don't want them to pull this, but they're probably going to pull their own. Let's hope. <sighs> Come on, die. What? I don't know what I... I don't want to know what I don't want to want. Uh, a three? No, no, no. We're going we're gonna to pretend that didn't happen. We're going to call an audible. <laughs> it's just so bad if that happens. Uh, it is primarily a multiplayer game. It is primarily multiplayer. I'm playing it solo with all these charts and bots, and it's certainly harder to play it that way because you got to memorize a whole bunch of different things. I mean, you could follow them. I'm trying to play it fast enough that it's actually interesting, so I'm trying not to consult the charts as much as I can. But I'm going to say the game is way better if this is not something Venice picks. Um, actually, honestly, Venetian agent hegemony. Ottomans lose one and one military power as well as a claim adjacent to the Aegean Sea. It's player versus player. Um, I'm playing against bots that are simulating players. So right now the Ottoman Empire is being simulated by a bot and the Venetian Empire is being simulated by a bot. And if I ever overcome either of them, they are replaced by France and Spain respectively. Which is, it is very interesting. It is... Uh, if you've ever heard of Europa Universalis 4, a computer game, this is like, what if we tried to make that as complex as possible and put it into the into into here? I guess, you know what? We're not going to cheat. We're just going to... We'll take this one. It would have been better if Venice picked any other number to roll, like their own thing, uh, but... Because then the Venetians would go to war with the Ottomans as well. But in this case, we're just going to play it as it lies. We rolled the dice, we rolled the dice. Uh, so, in here, pick the rightmost revealed event. Uh, is an opponent's event, yes, resolve option B. So, Venetian Aegean Hegemony. Ottomans lose one prestige and one bot tower. Prestige is the name of the game. It's how you win the game, basically. So, uh, currently, I'm in last place, but it takes a while for the uh, Byzantine Empire to get caught up. Um, and then they lose one bot power which is actually good. They only have six left. I've got eight military power left. Um, so if I can raise enough troops, the problem is I'm not going to be able to raise enough troops. Oh my God. 
Well, allies are free. That's right. Mercenaries, I can raise as many as I want, right? It's the local, it's your actual troops that matter. And this can technically raise three at a time. So I think we're, I think we're okay. We're going to raise a big army. We're going to fight them next turn. I won't have to take this event. It's fine. Uh, and the Ottomans also lose a claim adjacent to the Aegean Sea, which is like, hey, that claim you're fighting over, you jerks, you lose it now. It's not there anymore. Huzzah. Then we get the pirate event, and the uh, uh, Venetians have to place pirates. Well, the Venetian player would certainly pick a node far away from them. So unfortunately, as it is for me, the, the, the Venetian player is going to put pirates in my Black Sea node over here. That's the only node with a merchant that they don't care about. And I think you have to prioritize nodes with merchants. Do you have to prioritize nodes with the most merchants? That's what I need to find out. It has to have at least one merchant if possible. So yes, that's exactly correct. And that's the only other thing that happens on this card. That's done. So the only saving grace is, is there something really good here? Establish the Inquisition. Pay three to research. Duzvolt idea. Or if your player almost Catholic, optionally pay one diplomatic power to call a crusade against uh, instead. Um, I actually don't know what the Duzvolt idea is. I think it's an administrative idea. Permanent Holy War causes spell I cast a spell I against adjacent distant realms and realms of distant state religions. If with war with what such a realm... Wow! Mercenary units cost one, oh, one ducat less. I thought it said one ducat total. So that is good. And if I was preparing for a war instead of being in the middle of one, I would take them up on that offer. <laughs> Am I streaming usually? Uh, I will be uh, probably uh, Tuesday nights and... Saturday Saturday mornings um, are likely to be my streaming, though um, this Saturday might be trickier. It might be Saturday night um, and possibly next Sunday night. We'll see. But um, probably not tomorrow, probably not Thursday. I usually have actual in-person in gaming on, on uh, Thursdays. And then I've got a war game group that meets on Fridays where we're probably going to play this in person. So otherwise, uh, you know, uh, not for the near future, but definitely next Tuesday. So for now, we have to figure out the next thing that happens. So that was the event action that the Venice bot did. Do they have 10 bot power and less than eight? Yeah, they do, don't they? And less than eight large towns. So they're going to develop one of their towns. They're going to spend two bot power. And they're going to develop one of their large towns. Have a good one, Greg. Thanks for stopping by. Hello, Nasak. In a sec. So they are going to turn a small town into a large town. Which one? Hmm. Probably one of these ones like Verona. I don't like it, but they did it. Now it's me. And if I don't want to get my capital sieged, I'm going to have to raise an army right now. So we're going to do that. And in order to raise everything... I could spend this as a minor action to refresh these. And what I'd like to do is probably get two cavalry. Oh, no. Ugh. Allies go last. And mercenaries go first. So let's do that. Here we've got the prices at the bottom. You can see the mercenary costs. Cavalry are very expensive. But mercenaries are two more expensive in every direction. So if I'm going to buy a mercenary, I'm going to buy a, an infantry. So now the, in, the mercenaries are always chosen as casualties before anything else. So I'm going to take one of those to absorb a, a, a loss for sure. Then I've got these guys. And I think then I can put another uh, ally up here. And we're going to calculate the total for this in a second. Then the rest of these are just going to be infantry. So, in this case, it's 2, 4. These are all free. And then this makes 8. And an ally cavalry is 3, so that's 11. And then my other cavalry adds an extra 5, so that's 16. So I can get one more mercenary for the last 
four, and I've wiped out my 20. I didn't even have to take a loan. Brilliant. And so now I've got an army that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So much stronger than your terrible, fearful Ottoman army, is it not? All right. And I think we're going to stick with Constantinos as the ruler, because I'm still aiming on getting him killed so I can sneak in uh, Robert for free, a better leader. The kind of leader that we deserve. So this is going to be a big-ass battle. And in this case, uh, this is a superior one. Let's see, you may add one to your general to re-roll up to three battle dice. Yeah, I can choose to kill my general with this one. That's kind of cool. So yeah, we're going to play this. But we're going to follow the, the land battle sequence here. Land battle, enemy is a PR. Bot is the attacker, no. Battle is in main defender realm. I already have appointed a general as a minor action. I played my battle actions. So I, no I roll normally. The bot is going to roll five. So my total is going to be three, which is the default number of dice, plus two for my leader, the two little white dice there. So I'm going to roll five white dice, and then six, seven white dice, and then one uh, cavalry dice. So one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come on, we got to get some good hits in here. Wow, that is absurd. One, two, three, four. Four, and I couldn't trigger the other cavalry because I only have two. So I only got four hits. I mean, it could be worse. Could be worse. So the good news is uh, that I got a lot of hits in. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Here's the bot firing back. It can get a, a, as many hits as it lands. Oh, it killed my leader. <laughs> Mission accomplished, I guess. <laughs> and let me see. They got uh, infantry, tertios, tertios. And so that means three hits to me. So it has to be mercenary, gone. Then it has to take one of mine. Then it has to take an ally. That's the order in which you must take uh, losses. So, ow, number one. And um, number two, the leader. He's dead. So I don't know if I can put a different leader in charge now. What is... Let's see. Assigned casualty is normal. Human players general receives a thing rolled by bot. So what happens to a leader destroyed in a battle in the normal rules is the question. We can actually use our handy dandy index here. Uh, land battle. So, wounded generals. Each pair, a general receiving his second dies. If a dead general is a realm's rule, see ruler death. So I guess I probably cannot assign a new ruler to this battle. I'll still roll extra dice thanks to inspired leadership, because this lasts the whole battle, but I'm not going to be able to assign a general. Unfortunately. So, it doesn't cost anything to assign this as my ruler ruler. Only if I assign him as a general. So now we're going to round two. And I'm going to roll five white and one orange. All I need is two hits on this. Come on. There we go. Plenty of, plenty of two hits. And so I've knocked them out there. And now I have to roll for them. And the max they can get is two hits. I hope they only get one, though. They got two. So I lose another mercenary, and I lose my own guy. So losing one of the allies was a bit painful, but I still have a six-man army. Uh, that's not terrible. And more importantly, I gain a bot power. Or not a bot power. <laughs> I gain a person power, a military power, uh, which means that... Uh, you know, if I survive the round, I might have to... Um, um, as a minor action, I can appoint a leader now. Um, 
I don't know if I want him to be a leader against a bot that's always rolling five dice. That's a risk. I think I want to use this guy as my leader. In a pinch, I can use him, but the extra two blue dice are still extra dice. And I've got an extra set of dice here to roll as well. So I think I'm... He's, he's got a lot of cubes left, but if he gets down below four... So I just have to win the next battle and deny him the free bot power for winning it. Uh, and he's going to do a defend action. I actually got it right this time. Jesus Christ. Any area with invaders? Yes. Has two power left and an army in area where can siege? No. Is the bot's army twice as large as the invading force? No. Has two bot power left and more manpower? Yes. Now the defend action costs him one. So the first thing that has to happen is he has to spend one. Um, and so he is going to spend two to recruit nine guys. And that's going to bring his whole force to bear again. He raises up his whole army. Uh, okay, now is his army twice as big as any invading force? No. And his army is larger than any invading force? Yes. Is his army on the map? No. Any areas with bots, towns where army would not trigger a battle, place the army in own area without hostile units, check military capacity. Uh, max military capacity. So he goes here, I think. And he's going to be looking at me across the, the um, across, across the Bosphorus Strait here. <sighs> All right. Good news. Uh, he will defend again next turn. Unless I just walked out of his area. Like, you know, if I just leave his area, he won't defend. He'll pass instead. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do that? Can I walk, like, into my allies area? Ah, uh, no. Not really. I need a boat. And right now, like, the only place I can walk is here. Technically, I can walk here and get rid of one influence. And then I'm not invading him anymore, so he passes instead of defending. That seems a little cheesy, though. Yeah, Spearhead, that's that's what I thought. Spearhead confirms. You only assign the general to start a battle. You can't assign a new general if your general dies. So part of that plan was, let me just get this ruler killed so I can appoint his cousin or whatever, who's better at running the military. Yes, that's great in theory until it actually happens, and then the army is leaderless for the second round. Luckily, I got enough hits in the first round. So, yeah, I think, like, moving him to here and paying an influence for the military access just to force the bot to pass feels rather gamey, right? I should have to beat him on his own terms, I think. So anyway, he did his defend action, which was raise an army and then um, put it here. And then, yeah, um, then it's over to, to Venice bot, who is not at war. And drew an event last time, so they're going to draw Papal Curia. And they are going to discard an admin. The more man of the church. And the other part of Papal Curia here... They are technically the uncontested Papal Controller. Are there areas adjacent with two or more provinces owned by Muslim realms and no active excommunication or crusade. Yeah. Place a crusade token and a claim on such an area and score one point. So I haven't actually messed around with crusades at all. So let's double check the rules for that. Uh, let's see. Crus call a crusade. Select target area that has at least two provinces owned by Muslim realms and place a crusade token there. You may immediately take a free declare war action by targeting any Muslim realms with provinces in the target area to gain one prestige and two mercenary infantry units for free. If you do so, tag the committed to crusade slot on the status map with a chit. Uh, the crusade token provides a holy war CB for all Catholic realms. If you use this CB on a valid target when taking a declare war action, tag it so... This occurs in phase four. I think it just triggers 
the bots are going to be, um, it's more likely to do a war action now that the crusade would be called. That's really what's going on here. And a realm that's committed to crusade score two influence or, or prestige if they have any units in the crusade's target area and there are no provinces owned by Muslim realms left. Interesting. Otherwise, they each lose two, so they're completely required to do that. I don't know if the bot's going to be up to that, but we'll find out. Um, because the question here, is it going to choose Aiden or is it going to choose the Mamluks? They're both situations which are adjacent to its towns in the Aegean Archipelago. Uh, so, huh. Place Crusade token on such an area. Prefer area where bot has towns. Well, the bot doesn't have towns anywhere. So we have to fall back on the other area rules. And I think it's going to prefer uh, areas that contain opponents. That is my guess. Uh, area selection. Oh, that's right. It's, it's, it's on the back of this nice reference sheet here. When applying effects beneficial or bad for the opponent... Hmm. I'm just going to roll random. It's entirely possible they go against the Mamluks or against the Ottomans. Uh, so 50-50, 1, 2, 3 for Ottomans, 4, 5, 6 for Mamluks. All right, they're going to pick the Ottomans. And the area has to contain at least... Crusade token. It has to be two provinces owned by Muslim realms. So that does not apply here. Uh, it does apply here. So they're going to put a claim and a crusade token. I actually don't know where the crusade tokens are in this. Are they over on the side here? Uh, there it is. A big ass crusade token. All right. Uh, and then. Go to military, select valid crusade target, and skip directly to the declare war step. All right, I got rewarded for letting the bot do its thing, I guess. You're right, province targeting, um, it, it technically goes by alphabet, right? So it goes A. So I, I just decided to do a roll instead. I think it was 50-50. If a player was running that, would they consider going after the Ottomans because they're at war with me? Or would they prefer to go after a non-player realm because it would be easier in the long run? In this case, it turns out they went after the Ottomans. Uh, okay. So they went to a military action to go straight to declare war step, which is spend one to raise their whole army. Uh, and then do they have allies adjacent to the target? Yes. Yes, and they can... Um, they can lose this too as well. I think they do. Even though it's a crusade, they still have to do the normal thing where they gain two bot power, actually, uh, from that. Now, let me see. I didn't mess this up, right? It would be one, two, three was over here. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Okay. They did have a situation where they would have still... Continued. I thought maybe they were going to pass or something, but they moved a lot of bot power over here this turn is what it comes down to. So they did that. Now the target potentially sends defensive calls to arms, but the Ottomans don't have any to call. And then remove all of bot's influence from all of target's areas. Okay, so this is really just this one, it looks like. And does it trigger naval battles? Yes. This will be interesting. It'll trigger probably a couple. So a naval battle here. And a naval battle here. And I think that's it. So let's do the Eastern Med first. So here's a question. Per adjacent bot ship, does that include the ships in the sea zone. I think it does. 
C tiles in alphabetical order. Oh, okay, fine. A G and C goes first, sure. Um, so, enemy enemies a player, bot is attacker, yeah. Um, because it's a bots versus bots. So, bots roll one die plus one per adjacent bot ship. So, this one's happening first, and it is one, two bonus dice for each of them. So, they each roll three. One, two, three. Here's for the attacking Venetians. Three hits! Wow. Okay. And they also score one per two ports they control on the GNC. And I see two for them. So they got a total of th four hits. Meanwhile, the Ottomans only score one plus one, two, three. So they both got four. <laughs> bot versus bot. Remove sh Oh, re-roll if tied. <laughs> okay. Here's Venice again. Venice got two this time, plus the one that they have. So they have three. The Ottomans got two plus the three that they have. So Ottomans win, and the Venetian bot goes away. The uh, boat goes away. And then we go to the other resolution, and in this situation, um, the Venetians get two boats, and the Ottomans get two boats. So they're still rolling three dice each, but the ports uh, have changed, though not necessarily in Venice's favor. So here is one, two, three for Venice. They need all three. Two. And... They only have the one adjacent port, so they get no benefit from that. So that's two hits for Venice. And I think the Ottomans have two hits automatically here. One, and then two. Yeah. Yep, Ottomans win again. So the Venetians lose another boat. I'm sure they're not happy about that outcome. But it's a crusade. What are you going to do? The Pope calls it. You got to go. So, uh, naval battle. Does it trigger land battles? No. Is Venetian army st strength, uh, army size, uh, two times greater than target's enemy strength? No. Uh, it does not have any more manpower left, so it goes to army map on, uh, on map board? No. Place army in own area closest to enemy, so they can raise it here in uh, the Aegean, but then they have to check for max army capacity, and they are limited. They lost their boats. Just, sorry. Your boat's done died. So, what does that mean for us here? Uh, let's look... I, I gotta look up the max army capacity. I don't think it's here. It's earlier on. So, area has no land connection to bot's capital. It's the bot's military capacity in the area plus three... Minimum nine if naval bridge closes the only gap. So, uh, in this case, it's two. Oh, I'm sorry. There's another ally for them to call. I didn't even notice. So, they get another two. They have to remove this. Oh, hang on. They can't call them because they only have one. That's right. They only have one. So anyway, their maximum army capacity is actually only five, which is not too bad. They only lose one. It's standing on its head. Can I knock it? Can I nudge it? No, I want it to fall over. There we go. Now it's what it's supposed to look like. We have one that is not apl applicable here, but it's not also dead either. Okay. So we checked army capacity after this, actually. And then, does it trigger battle? Uh, no. Is there hostile units or areas less than or equal to two spaces away, including naval bridge? Um, no. Can placing a ship that would help and has not placed a ship this turn? Yes. Place ship to extend naval bridge triggers battle? Yes. Man, they are determined! <laughs> but I think they're gonna lose it again automatically, for, unless they roll really well and the Ottomans roll really badly. 
The Ottomans have uh, one, two free ports, two free uh, hits from the ports on this sea zone. And the, uh, so they, the Venetians have to win by two, by three. So they have to get all hits and the Ottomans have to get all misses. Yeah, nope. The Ottomans just have to get like one, not, not even one actually. So they lose their ship again. <laughs> Good try. Thanks for playing. Uh, hostile units can play ship. It can't place a ship and it can't move. So it ends its turn. Wow. You need to fix that whole um, Venetian armory thing because you don't have enough ships adjacent. I have a feeling, um, oh, you know what? Would this even have made sense? Would they have not just placed it here where they could have full army capacity and then walked here? Except they can't. Yeah, no, it says in area closest to enemy where they have towns. That's where it is. Is what it is. All right, well, I think they're just going to be mostly useless for over the next forever. Anyways, it's my turn. And what I'm going to do is take a minor action to refresh my military. Whoa. Don't, don't lose that. Take a minor action to refresh my military power. Then I'm going to take a recruit action. And I'm going to take an eensy-beensy loan. Just a little itty-bitty loan. Not a lot of loan, just a little loan. And use it to hire a mercenary. And then I'm going to take one more, just, just one loan, just a second. It'll be fine. I'll take one more loan and I'll use it to hire uh, these two guys. And that will give me one more duke it there. It's not a spiral towards death with lots and lots of doom. No, this is fine. It'll be great. No problem. I'm having a heart attack. Okay, um, so that's my turn. We'll see what the Ottomans do. They go to do a defend action. Any areas with invaders. So my goal here was to have more dudes than them, right? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, I have one more than them. That was the plan. And I did it by gut instinct. Albania is an ally, but they can't activate them for an offensive ally. Uh, sorry, Albania is an ally. Yes, you were right there. Uh, these are the ones they can't activate as an as an offensive ally because they only have one influence there. I did activate Albania, and I gave them the two bot power for that. Oh, you're saying Albania is an ally, and they could potentially walk through there. Oh, that's a good point. So maybe let's let's treat the the bot as if it's kind of not dumb. Obviously, going here would be closer to the claim, but if they're going to be closer to the target, right? Um, that's what it, it is. What it is. So they would walk into here, which they're allowed to do because their ally is in the war. Now I see what you're saying. And now they've got three targets. <sighs> they're going to choose the Goram capital, but I'm going to siege it before they do. I think. No, because this would have been my turn. Okay, okay, back up. This is not involved now. If I spend my turn raising an army and Venice walks in here, from the previous turn, yeah, let's say that's where Venice is. At that point, I don't need to raise an army, so I don't need to take these loans because Venice is actually going to join me in the war against them. So let's 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 back up a, a step here. Instead of raising an army, instead of the minor action that gave me uh, the exhausted power. So yeah, so we're going to treat their whole thing as they started here, and then they moved two spaces because they're now in hostile territory and they pick the area that has the most enemy base tax. So here they are, that ends their move and that ends their turn. So now it's my turn and I'm going to siege instead of raising an army because now I've got Venice backing me up. If the Ottomans walk in here, they're at war with both of us. 
So we both are fighting in a war against them, even though we're not allies with each other. So I need to spend three military power to activate three infantry to siege down the Ottoman cities in this region. Which is a better result overall, I think. Okay. And did I pay the one to assign this guy? I don't remember doing it. I'm going to pay it because I'm pretty sure I did not pay that one. So let's not cheat too much. All right. So I sieged these down. Those are occupied now. And then we come back to Ottoman bot. And Ottoman bot is going to do its defend action again. Defend costs one. So it spends one. And any areas with invaders. Yes. Has two or more bot power left and an army in an area where it can siege? No. Army is two times the size of invading any invading force. I'm going to say because both of us are together, the answer to that is no. And it also does not have more bot power. Is its army greater than any invading force? No. Because this is, cons again, I'm collectively cons choosing this to mean collective, because if it comes in here, it's going to have to fight us both. Is its army greater than three? Uh, I'm sorry, here. Army deployed in an area we can siege? No. Any area with bots, towns that are occupied and no invaders? No. Roll a die. It's going to try to do some spy action against us. Probably. Nope. A one to two. Place the army in the area with the smallest invading force. Oh, they, they are going to fight. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, sure. Bring it on, I guess. I didn't realize there was a chance that they could fight on that. So, I am going to... Gotta get used to these cameras. Multiple enemies. So, fighting multiple enemies. If a player attacks an area where there are units from two or more different realms with whom they are at war, these units defend as one united force whether they're allied or not, and just roll one set of battle dice. NPR units defending their own area are not added to the army mat and defending uh, of a defending player will be removed from the map at the end of the battle. If there are two or more player realms defending, that, in that includes bots, the player realm with the most units will be named as the main defender. Bot rules main attack is always human. Okay, so the human is always the main defender. Good call. If tied, the player who last took a turn, blah, blah, blah. Only the main defender may use their general in battle, play battle actions, and roll the battle dice. If multiple defenders are retreating, they may each blah, blah, blah. Assigning casualties. When there are multiple defending, assign casualties by alternating between these, going from the largest to smallest faction, based on number of units, with the attacker deciding ties. Okay. Now, the bot, the Venice bot actually does have this guy in his army, because the last time we checked it was here and then they marched into here and now we haven't checked it since so yeah i figured there was a bot rule bot bots fighting alongside player realms when defending alongside another bot treat the bot with the biggest army when fighting alongside a human the human player is always treated as the main defender that's right so i have to do the the fighting here uh but i don't know if i need to waste this card to win i think i'm gonna do a pretty dang good job with the with this other army able to take casualties for me with just five dice. Gulp. Um, but maybe I do it anyway. Because on a next defend action, it would have to spend both of these. It would not be able to... Yeah, if, if we wipe out the Ottomans here and now, um, they don't come back. So I can maybe go and siege down Greece also. Uh, I wish this was on my own turn and I could get credit for it. I would also not mind sieging down Wallachia and Bulgaria. That's a better use of my ma military power. It gets me a slight uh, an edge over them. But Greece gets me that really nice uh, mission completed. Um, gain cores in... Macedonia and Thrace, and a claim in Serbia and Albania and Wallachia and Bulgaria, along with one extra manpower. That is nice. So we'll probably want to go get the Greece one, because the plus one manpower will 
well, I'll get less, one less base tax if we settle the war at the end of the round this way. You know what? I haven't even done... I can move one more over there. I might be able to get both. So, assuming we win this, march in here for one, siege for two. March to here for one, siege for one. Yeah, I can get all of them. I can get all of them and then force the bot to give up. That'll be beautiful. So I'm going to do... Oh, but not if I spend superior tactics. We're just going to throw the dice and see what happens. I've got my leader here who's rolling his uh, blue dice. Uh, and maybe we assign the ruler general instead? No, we're just going to do it. Just going to play it as it lies. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. We got one, two, three hits. That's not bad. I've seen much worse in opening rounds. Okay, the bot is firing back one, two, three, four, five. He gets two hits. Even better. So the largest, the main defender takes the first hit, or uh, let's see. Or is it the largest force? Largest to smallest, not the main defender. Okay. So um, the largest force being six. Oh, we both have largest. I'm probably largest force then. So I have to take a hit before my ally does, unfortunately. Hey. Get your small guy inside the big guy, all right? And then they have to take the next hit. So there's the two hits. And then we roll again. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Fingers. Two, three hits, because we do have still one cavalry. Excellent. That's really going to weaken them now. And they're firing back. They can get five hits here. That would be devastating. Oh, they got four hits instead, so I lose two, and uh, my, oof, my this guy loses two also. They have two hits. Yeah, they got two hits, and I got one, two, three, and I got one... Yeah, I did three, they did two, I got three, and they did uh, one, two, three, four hits that round. Yes, his hits are limited to the number of units on the side, but he didn't lose the units. I moved them up there, but he, he still got to fire with those units in that round. So now we're on the final round. One, two, three, four, five. We just need two hits. Come on, two hits. You can do it. Come on! Damn it! Oh no! I'm not gonna have enough! Oh boy. He's limited to two hits. I need him to miss pretty hard here. Oh god. I have to take it on the caval cavalry and hope that he whiffs on the next one. Uh, that's not even gonna happen though. God damn it. I just gotta go get grease, I guess. That's disappointing. Because here goes my roll. One, two, three, four, five. Well, there's one more if I need it. Yeah, we got him. And then he's firing back. One, two, three, four, five. If he misses here, it's going to be the ball game. Actually, no, but three hits. No. Uh, oh, you can only do one. You can only do one. And this is the larger arm. They're both the larger arm. I got to take it, I think. Um, does it say what happened on ties? The attacker deciding ties. Well, what would the Ottoman choose? I guess we're going to roll to see whether the Venetians or we would lose the last hit here. Because um, what did he just get? Three? Yeah, he got infant. Oh, but he only got one hit. That's right, because he only had one guy. So who takes this is one, two, three, me, four, five, six, Venice. Ah, fucking garbage. <laughs> Damn it all to hell. Uh, I guess uh, it was not to be. I could have been a contender. But I do not have the wherewithal now. Well, actually, if there are enough rounds, I might be able to do it. Either way, the Ottomans lost 
Get the hell out of here. That was their turn. Allied blood is cheap, yes. Yes, the, the main defender is always human. Uh, but the bot rules, the main defender isn't the one who takes casualties. So when you assign casualties, you assign them by alternating from largest to smallest with the attacker deciding ties. And in the bot rules, do not say anything about uh, changing that. It only determines that the player is always the main defender. That's why my general mattered and the Venetian general did not because you don't have a general. Um, so we need to find out what they would do now. They're at war. So because they have at least four, they'll do something. They're not going to do a siege action because there are no targets for them to siege here. Uh, instead, they're going to pull a card, I believe. Right? Can't siege. They're not under attack. But they have, you know, at least this, so they're going to pull a card. Oh, God. Why does it have to... No! Why does it have to be a military card? Actually, they're going to... They can't walk across here. Actually, I was going to say they're going to walk across there. They're going to go here, and they're going to siege before I get a chance to siege those bastards! <sighs> Very annoying. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Isn't superior tactician's second option is recruit? It is recruit. The problem is I only had just barely enough military power to siege both of these and siege this one. But now Venice is going to go siege these instead of me. So I can't do it regardless. So we got to... At least I think that's what this chart is going to tell him to do. At war, yes. Select enemy realm with greatest strength. Uh, they increase their army to size 3 automatically. Uh, I don't think I paid for this action. Um, and then army size is greater than equal to target strength. Yeah, because... Well, no, target... It's not, because target strength includes the things that they can raise. So, they have four or more left. Yes, spend two to raise the entire army. Jesus. Bots are... Just able to keep raising armies. It's crazy. Um, and then the answer is no, no. Is the army on the board? Yes. Check for maximum army capacity. So here, army capacity includes allies that are active in the war, I think, can be part of military capacity, if I'm not mistaken. Uh... Oh, uh, I should be looking at the bot rules for that, just to be sure. Uh, connection to the capital with a continuous chain of bots towns adjacent by land. So, I guess they don't? So, it's the military capacity of... It's three. They only get three. The other three are laid down. Because they do not have a military capacity because they have no ship here. Therefore, these are not adjacent. So, it is what it is. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but you get a problem. All right, let's see what happens. So, check army capacity. Can siege in current area? No. Hostile units or areas uh, less than or equal to two spaces away. Um, yes. Move army to enemy in range. Prefer largest enemy force, which is less than or equal to own army, then areas with own claims. Well, neither of those apply. Can placing a ship help place a ship to extend naval bridge? No, I think they would just walk. I don't think they'd go around this loop. I think they would they would walk up here. That seems like the proper course to me. So, it is what it is. I'll just uh, pass a little bit sooner. Um, I gotta do commercial growth anyway. So anyway, it's back around to me. I'm gonna spend one military power to march my army down to Greece. And owner vassalize. So yeah, I will be able to trigger that at the end of this. I know they have a claim, but they can't make it down there. There's no ship here for them to cross. 
And if they place a ship, they're almost certainly going to lose it. Oh no, actually, the enemy no longer has these three. So the enemy only has a plus two onto this C zone, but they only have a plus one. They're still likely to lose it. And if you look at this specifically, hostile units are areas less than or equal to two spaces away. Yes. Move enemy to enemy area in range. This doesn't say place a ship. You only place a ship if you can't walk there. Right? This says including naval bridge. Adjust unit availability in army based on mil maximum armor capacity. So they're just going to go here in siege. Which sucks because I don't know if that means they're going to annex those. And that's going to make it harder for me to get what I need. So they do that. I marched over here and stopped. And then Ottoman bot. Oh no, I did it again. Page 17. There it is. Ottoman bot. Oh, by leaving the area. Uh, maybe Ottoman bot raises troops and then goes and attacks them. That would not be bad, actually. Because they're the bigger force. So let's find out. Um, defend action. No, they can't raise troops. That's it. In order to spend on the defend action, uh, spend one. So we go to the defend action. Any area with invaders? Yes. Does it have two bot power left? No. Army is uh, no. Definitely no. Has two? No. Army larger than any invader's force? No. Is army deployed in an area we're going to siege? No. It gets minimum three added to the board. Uh, and then, any areas with bots, towns that are occupied, and no invaders? Yes. Place army in own area without hostile units. Uh, prefer area with highest tax value of own towns that are occupied by enemies or rebels and then own capital area. An own area without hostile units. Does that mean it's going to go here? Because if so, I, I'm mad. <laughs> I don't want them to take that back, please. I could go and crush it, but I still don't want them to. Um, an own area. Does that count as their own area even though I'm occupying it? I don't think so. Mardax, I'm talking to Joe, uh, Joas on uh, Twitch chat. Yeah, I don't think that it owns this either. Uh, so I think what the result would be the army does get raised, but it gets raised in the capital area here. And next turn, it will still not have anything that it can do with this one point, um, probably. So then Venice is up. <sighs> And they can siege. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, they only spend two to siege. Nightmare! Ba, 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 ba. Okay. So, yeah, they get those two spots. I really wanted those two spots. But at least they're weakening the Ottomans. It is what it is. Um, and then their turn's over. My turn, I will siege for one, because that's my main, main, main goal. So I might as well do that. And crap, do I want to try to build an army up just in case? I don't think so. I think the Ottomans are done. I don't think they can get to me where I am anyway. So now the Ottomans are up, and technically they still go down the defend route, um, but they won't have any way to do anything with it? So let's see what happens. Uh, have two bot power left in an area where it can siege. No. 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 Uh-oh. It's yes. Army is on the map. Yes. Invaders in any area where bots militant maximum army capacity is greater than invading force. Ew. Because it raised it up to three, it's going to do this. So let me back up. <laughs> Instead of... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. It's going to go after Venice. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Place in area with the largest invading force that qualifies. 
Yes, they're going after Venice. They're three against Venice's three because Venice didn't have uh, army capacity. So the two bots are fighting. I hope Venice wins because otherwise the Ottomans will get another bot power and I won't like that at all. Um, land battle resolution. Uh, oh, I need to remind myself. Do I need to have a larger army than them in order to... Uh, enforce peace? I think I might. So, like, my last action probably needs to be to raise an army. Player Realms deployed land units outnumber the total number of rebels in their areas plus any deployed enemy land units. Huh. Yeah. So I'm gonna need to get another mercenary. Regardless. Alright, for this naval, for this battle, enemy is a player around, bot is attacker, yes. There's no players, so bots are going to roll 5 and 5 against each other. It's that simple. So here is the Ottoman attacker. 1, 2, 3. I hope you all die. It gets 2 hits against the Venetians. The Venetians fighting back. Max they can get is... Oh, you know what? Hang on. i got to roll 2 more. Because I just rolled 3 there, right? Oh, and they missed anyway. Okay. And then um, here's the Venetians fighting back with their 5. Oh, wow. Venice wipes out the Ottoman army in one blow. Good job, Venice. What is the Venetian military capacity? Um, it's always a minimum of three. Um, and its military capacity was not checked. And I don't think you check it as part of another realm's situation here. Because what happened on the Venetian turn was their military capacity when they were standing here was still three. And then when they walked into here, it never changed. And the siege action does not update it to my knowledge. Uh, nope, it doesn't update military capacity. So like there's all these things that say check for military capacity, but they never got to one um, that did that because all they did was move uh, and then after the siege, now their military capacity would be increased, and yet, uh, it's too late. Yeah, they only check military capacity, max army capacity on their own turn, which limits it on everybody else's turn. Right, yes, that's correct. Uh, okay, so the Ottomans got wiped out in the first round, but they did knock out two of the Venetians, so... Theoretically, on the Venetian's turn, two of these guys will stand up automatically. Um, and probably they'll finish recruiting more, but we'll find that out in a second. Right now, the Ottomans uh, did their defend action to here, went to land battle. They were not victorious, so they end turn. I think uh, any, unit, any bot unit has units remaining. Yes. Has no units left. Resolving bot. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. So now it's Venice's turn. Venice has resolved um, a, an, uh, an event. We forgot to mark it. And in this situation, they are not under defend. And because they have only two available left, they're going down to here and say yes, and then here and say no. So they're going to pick the event. Uh, let's see what they pick. A one, which means leftmost event, and gain one bot power for the stuff that's on it. So they happen to pick their own event. Good job. That's quite right. So if I pick Comet Sighted, I'll get some extra cash, which I might really need. Also, it's good because I want to limit the rebels. Yeah, I'm picking that next chance I get. Um... So, the Ambrosian Republic. All right, Venice, look at what you've done. Add unrest to Brescia, Verona, and all cores, uh, all, all towns on Milanese cores. Well, there's no Milanese cores here, but Brescia and Ramona, uh, Verona, uh, place a rebel in Lombardy per unrest there. So in this case, there's only one rebel going in there. And that's going to trigger defend for them, which is going to make their army run away. Uh, now, the uh, Venetians are always going to choose an A on their own event. 
um, or even if it's not an opponent's event. So in this case, they're going to choose A. Help Svorza seize power. Venice gains a claim on Lombardy and an alliance with Mantua, and because they are resolving this, they also gain a bot power. Wow, they're sticking around for a little longer. Um, they get a claim in Lombardy and an alliance with Mantua, wherever that's hiding, right there. Mantova? No, Mantua, right? Where's Mantua? Is that a typo for Mantova? Mantova is probably the town. Mantua is likely the the name of the realm. Uh, M. Why is it out of... Where's Mantua? <laughs> there it is. Alps and Italy. Yeah, that's Mantua. Mantova is the capital of Mantua. That's what I had expected. Thank you for confirming. And that's the end of this chapter. And that means it's over to me. I am going to... Like with this. I can't go and unsiege these. I can't cross the ocean. I've gotten everything I can get, I think. So I am going to play Commercial Growth, which costs me two... Uh, actually, an interesting choice. Oh, all of this unrest is going away thanks to the claims that I have. So I don't have to worry about increasing stability for that reason. So yeah, we're going to play Commercial Growth, which ew, it cost me a little bit. I got to take a loan, but I want to get this done. And it allows me to turn a small city into a large city. And we're going to do that with Moria. And I get two ducats left over after the loan. Uh, it can also allow me to expand a trade node. We'll take, we'll take the city. All right, so that's done. Ah, that's right. That one needs to stay out. <sighs> All right, over to the Ottomans. They have no bot power. They have to, they have to end their turn. Um, wait a minute. I skipped over the Venetians, didn't I? The Ottomans were the one resolving that Venetian event. Weren't they? Two people have picked events. I think I gave them both to Venice by mistake. Venice should have passed, right? Is that what I did there? Yeah, Venice should have passed is what should have happened. And then they would have gained two bot power anyway for passing. They shouldn't have taken an event. And then, on my turn, I did my thing. And the Ottomans now have to take the event. Let's say they took the Venetian event here. Uh, they would do something different. So I don't think this is all going to happen. Uh, so the alliance and the claim come back. Because I think... If you let's assume that they rolled the one, the leftmost event. Is this an opponent's event? Yes, resolve B. Right, right, right. Because Venetians picked the Ottoman event earlier, which was bad. So this says to arms, Venice may do a land activation or a crude action for free. Why? Why would the Ottomans choose that? Bees are usually supposed to be bad, but <laughs> this isn't what? I guess I'll give them a military action, question mark? Is there anything in here that suggests what happens here? A recruit action. Pay one bot power to recruit all. Uh, yeah, it actually says give them a military activation. The rebel... Oh, you're right. The rebel and the unrest stays. Thank you. That's a good point. I forgot the bad stuff did happen, regardless. Um, oh, yeah, and I wasn't supposed to undo that anyway. That was done by the spy action, I think, when the um, when somebody else, the Ottomans, did that against Verona. 
Oh no, it says it right here. And all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. So yes, that's correct. So I guess in lieu of giving the, you know, the Venetians a free alliance and a claim, you just give them a free activation, which they can do even if they've passed, I guess. Yeah, they just get it. Let's just trigger one military action for Venice. At war, yes, select enemy realm. If the army has less than three units, increase it to three. It has four right now. Is army size less than or uh, greater than or equal to twice the enemy size? No. Do they have four bot power left and more? Yeah, they do. So they'll spend it into the pile to recruit the last two guys. And from there... Army is on the board. Yes. Check for max army capacity. Now it's two plus three is five. So it's everybody but one guy. Oops. Put this in the corner and lock it. It's anybody but one guy is currently standing. Can siege in current area? No hostile units or areas up to two spaces away, including a naval bridge. Um, no. Can place a ship that would help and does not place a ship this turn? Yes. Because if they could place a ship in the Aegean, which would let them cross into the other area. So that's what they will try to do. It will start a battle, which they will probably lose, but it's not quite as bad. They're only down by one by default here. Because the... Oh, but they're going to roll fewer dice. They're only rolling one extra die. Due to the naval battle system here. Plus one per adjacent ship. So they roll two, and the uh, Ottomans are going to roll three. So here's the Venetian attackers. So one hit there, plus one more hit from these two uh, Venetian towns. And now the Ottomans have two... Oh, stop moving so I can disappear, please. There we go. The Venetia, sorry, The Ottomans have three dice... And two, so they win, and they kick off the Venetians yet again. Uh, so triggers neighbor battle. Move the army up to four spaces to non-hostile area closest to enemy, and then end turn. So they will just stomp down in here. And they'll wait, I guess. Do they have to give me three ducats to move into this area because it's neutral now? <laughs> I don't know. Um, not military access in the HRE. Regular military access. You can always blah, 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 blah. By removing one opponent's own province, you would need uh, without verbal permission. Um, I mean, I guess I'd give them permission, but I don't remember if there's anything in the bot rules about military access from players. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. I don't see military access differences. Technically, I guess I could deny the bot military access if I wanted to. Let's just say I gave it to him. It's fine. So, where does that leave us? They got their free military activation. They moved close there. Uh, then they ended the turn. And it's back around to me. And I have to have an army larger than the Ottomans. But the Ottomans have to pass. So, I don't even need to raise an army. Really? But the Venetians are also going to pass. Do I value... I think I should pass here. Oh no, I have to take an event, do I? Crap. <laughs> I do have to take an event. Oh well. The problem I have is I don't have an army to defend... Oh, I'm not going to have rebels. I keep forgetting. I'm not really going to have rebels. This should be... Rebellion, too. Uh, because this is the only time I could have rebels. And I am mitigating it for the most part. There's only a one in six chance that I have to deal with rebels. So 
All players lose a stability. You gain two admin power and may discard up three milestones and are unpicked non-basic ideas and draw random replacements. I don't care about that. I'm going to choose an area adjacent to my realm. All players with a town in that area lose a stability. And it's going to be the Ottoman Empire. And that means they're going to... When bots lose stability, they gain an unrest in the end. So the next thing that happens is we roll Rebel Dice. Now, I only have to roll one total because I'm the one resolving the card. Ugh. I'm not going to need military power next turn because we're going to have a truce. So I'm not going to be able to expand against the Ottomans much. So I'm going to lose one military power and hope to keep this of min power and do some internal development. Then my square advisor has to... Oh, they both have to get um, a little bit ill. And that's the end of Comet Sighted. And now the bottom of this is a native uprising and then blue and orange DNPR's advance. Uh, I think they would go to Adana. Sure. Why not? Okay. So that's my event action. The Ottomans are then going to pass. Um, and they gain one bot power from that. And then I have to, I don't have to, but I think I'm going to pass. Doesn't get me any ducats, but uh, it is what it is. So overall, it looks like the Ottomans are going to definitely lose one, two, three, four base tax, and I'm going to gain that much. So that's a huge difference. Venice did pass. Yeah. And Venice, oh, you're right. Venice would defend, but they passed. That's right. Can't defend if you pass. Sorry, Venice. So, uh, and I only have one loan this time. I, I honestly thought that winning this first war was going to require me to go much deeper into debt. The fact that the Venetians came in and helped defend that area to give us a victory without me having to waste a bunch of military power and money building up mercenaries. Mwah, beautiful. Beautiful stroke of luck. They got into a war, even though I didn't get to take the card that got me into the war. They, they wound up in a crusade. And I think they're going to lose points for not having made it to the crusade area, too. We'll see. <clears throat> now, we move on to the end sequence. So, remove Cassus Belly and Truces. No NPR invasions. No Rebel Siege or Move. Well... Lucky for me, these rebels siege. Um, that's a core area, though, so nothing happens to that. And then I believe that the rebel just stays there. It has to be defeated. Um, so next we have peace resolution in turn order, starting with me. And I reserve the right to go back here in case I misunderstood the peace situation, but... I believe I can now enforce peace on the bot here. All I need is more uh, deployed units in my army than they have in theirs, uh, plus the rebels that are in my area. I have no rebels in my area. They have no army. I have one, therefore I have more than them. So that is a partial victory. So you do automatic white piece, then total victory, then partial victory. Um, so this is a partial victory against the Ottomans. Now I can never quite follow the sequence below. Players resolve peace for one enemy at a time. However, a player run with active allies normally negotiates on behalf of them. I can never tell. I guess you got to go through each phase. So does anybody have that automatic white piece? Not me, not the bot, not Venice. Then, does anybody have total victory? Not me, not Ottomans, not Venice. Then, does anybody have partial victory? Yes, me. So now we have to resolve my partial victory. And I think we want to just uh, do a keep current board state. Uh, because I want those things that are there. Um, and in this case, we have to remember, uh, if the Byzantium enforces peace on the Ottomans, such that Byzantium would annex all provinces in Greece and Macedonia and Thrace, except that they would normally be unable to annex Edirne, 
due to it being the Ottoman capital, then Byzantium may annex Edirn II. In this case, alphabetically determine a new capital for the Ottoman um, among Ottoman core provinces that are owned by the Ottomans, selecting among large core provinces first, normally Hudavendigar. So that is the normal uh, process. So that's what's happening here. So we get to the immense satisfaction of removing all of these from the board. Oh, it's just beautiful. They've only got one large town now. Still a lot of small ones, though. All right. Uh, I'm not liberating anything. Da, 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 da. Mix and match, blah, blah, blah. So then in the aftermath of peace, of truces here, peace resolution did this, partial, blah, blah, blah. Um, so now we got to go to other, other countries here. So now we have to go to the Ottomans to find out if they can do a, a peace here. Uh, it's on page five. There it is. So automatic white peace. No. Has achieved a total victory? No. At war with a human player? Not anymore. Um, at war with another bot? Um, is their army greater than the enemy's army? No. Tax value of enemy's provinces occupied by Ottomans is greater than or equal to um, Ottoman land owned by Venetia? No. Bot offers white peace, which is not going to be accepted, I don't think. Enemy bots accept if they cannot enforce peace and have two or more unrest in areas where they do not have claims. So the question is, can Venice bot enforce peace here? Because they do have, actually, technically, they, they do uh, have two where they don't have claims. So yeah. Don't forget to remove your unrest as part of your peace. That is true. That comes in the aftermath, I believe. Uh, no, that does not come in the aftermath. You're right. That is part, that is, that happens now. So... I remove the claim to flip both of these. Both my claims go back. Uh, so now we have to determine if the Venice bot can enforce its peace. So at war with another bot, army is greater than enemy bot's army. And this is also yes. And anyone occupies enemy's capital. So no, because my peace was already resolved. Enemy occupies any of bot's towns. The answer is no in this case, because the bot is in this reference is um, Venice. Venice is not occupied by an enemy. End war and keep current board state. Score prestige equal to tax income of retained enemy core properties. Provinces. Uh, da, 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 da. So yeah, I, man, Venice, really? You, I wanted those. I had a plan. I had a whole agenda. It was a thing. All right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, and then they have to score based on the tax income of the core provinces they stole. So they get two, one, two. And then if enemy still exists, flip war tokens to their true side. Player realms on both sides can add claims where they have lost towns. Bots add a max of one. I believe that's also true of... Um, so they're going to do this against their thing. Uh, they're also going to do this against me, though, aren't they? So I expect they're going to put it on what was their capital. So they're going to put a claim here. I don't like it, but they're going to do that. Okay. And then remove bots claims from areas where bot now owns all provinces... That is not true for Venice anywhere, and so we're done resolving all of the wars. I didn't actually mark any of these dang things. Um, so this is on a truce side. So Venice has a truce with them, and uh, they should have a truce with me. And I also have to demobilize all my allies, and the process for that... PR is at peace, flip that back. PR is at peace, remove allied units. Bots at peace, now remove the bots army unless the bots towns in that area in the area have unrest or rebel town. Huh.
so I guess this goes back because they don't have unrest in that area. Unless this is, I'm reading this wrong. Let me double check here. Aftermath. I'll do it on the screen so you guys can follow along. I, I try to do that. Piece of resolution. Um, there we go. Uh, aftermath. Me locate any. Oh, it's in the bots rules though. Yeah. Um, remove the bots army from the map unless the bot has any towns with rebels or rebel towns on them in the area where their army is located. Okay, so yes, that that is the answer. So there are no. Uh, no unrest here, so the bot goes off the map, and it will pop back on the map next turn to deal with the rebels here. Okay. So, flips respective war tokens. We flip our active allies back over. And that includes Albania in this case. Okay, so that's the Peace and Rebels done. Uh, I wonder how Crusade figures into that. Um, is that part of the Prestige penalties? No. In phase four, step E, it is the prestige penalties. But that's not listed in the uh, this little guide I've got here. I wonder if they missed that. Step four. Oh, phase four. It actually is during the income track. Okay, never mind. I was in phase three still. So let's continue phase three, finish it up here. Uh, do, 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 do. Bingo. So phase four, there's no interregnums. Nobody's occupied anywhere. Religious dissent. That's still a problem for some people, though not the Ottomans. The Ottomans, yes, over here in the Trezebond area is diverse faiths. Um, which probably should be on the board as a reminder. Um, it's probably a good idea to put this on the board anywhere that it is um, a, an issue. And it's not the case for the anybody else. That is just them. So that's done. Gain and remove unrest from stability. That's nothing here. Roll rebel dice. So... I don't have to roll rebel dice anymore. That's good. The Ottomans have to roll one, two, three rebel dice. One, two, three. Oh, they lose two, but then they do have a rebellion that they can't stop. That's good news. Oh, I didn't see this, but they've already got rebe they've already got unrest there, so they can't do that because you're right. Um, that's Orthodox area with Catholic Venice. Um, but the Catholic here, Catholic here, Catholic all up there. Um, so this was the other area. But anyway, um, so there has to be a rebel town for the Ottomans. It's going to be this one. And I got to remember now to put a cube here and a cube here when we check their manpower for next turn. Because they each have one there now. But they do lose unrest in the other two areas. That were the other two roles were remove unrest. Okay, so now the Venetians, one, two, three dice. They just lose a military uh, or a cube, rather. Okay. So next on here. That was rule rebel dice, so now we go to income and upkeep. I don't think we have to cut any costs. We have zero for military deployment. Let's see what we've got. Uh, two for stability, four 
10, 11 income minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think that's it. I think we get plus 6. That's awesome. That's really cool. I have to demobilize this military unit too. I forgot. Uh, yeah. When you have no military, you can have a pretty <laughs> excessive treasury, <laughs> which is nice, I guess. Uh, okay. So that's my cost. Now I get to collect monarch power. I get three, one, two, three, four admin. We get only two for diplomatic. That is really weak. I could try to make an alliance with... Serbia, that'll cost me one. And then the other one, maybe I could try to trade. Uh, and then my military power is five. So we gained five. Uh, this, oh, this is my dead leader. Okay. Allied blood is cheap, but dead soldiers are even cheaper. <laughs> yeah, we're not paying any kind of war guild to their family. The bots gain eight each. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I think eight, right? I'm playing on hard mode, so I think that's eight. Let me make sure I get it right. Yeah, playing on hard is eight. Uh, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They actually get an extra one, nine, because they are the papal controller. All right, so the bots now have all of their power. Discard spent stuff, blah, blah, blah. Score prestige. Uh, so this is where we check active crusades. Uh, in phase four. A player who is uncontested papal controller, that doesn't apply here. Players with the absolute monarchy idea score any active crusade and or power struggles. I have to go all the way to page 46 to find out exactly the details again. Catholic realms that are committed to crusade, in this case Venice was, each score two prestige if they have any units in the crusade's target area. I think they are anyway. Um, when we did the Papal Curia action, did it tell us to mark it, place a crusade token, and a claim on the area, and to skip directly to declare step? Doesn't say that we marked them as committed to crusade anywhere, did it? So, like... How do you mark yourself as committed? You made immediate to declare war against target Muslim realm of the province in the area to gain one prestige and two mercenary infantry units for free. So I guess, yeah, when they did that, they should have tagged committed to crusade. So they are. If um, Otherwise, they each lose two prestige. So they did not really, like, the crusade failed, which is like, duh. Like, they pretty much all failed, but they tried. Um, so Venice... Loses two prestige. Excellent. Uh, before we go further, I'm going to remember that I actually want to check off the fact that I've recovered core territories. I own or vassalize all provinces in Greece's, Greece and Macedonia and Thrace. That is these three areas and then these three areas. So we'll have to finally integrate Athene soon enough. But for now, I'm going to check off... That gun, Chekhov's gun. Yes. Get it? Okay. I'm just going to go... Boop. Succeeded. And then... Uh, one mission in the previous tier makes the other ones possible. So I gain a core... Oops. Uh, cancel. I gain a core on Macedonia and Thrace only, apparently, and a claim in Serbia and Albania and Wallachia and Bulgaria as well as plus one manpower. So I get 
one core and two claims. I'm sad I only get one core. I get a core here, but it's like, I don't get a core here? What the hell? Uh, da, 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 da. And then I get two claims. One here and one here. So maybe instead of going to war with Serbia, we go ahead and conquer it. Or we ally them in an attempt to subjugate them later. The problem is my current leader is a dullard when it comes to diplomacy. So we'll see how the future leaders are. Because the peace resolution most always removes their units from the board, they never actually score it because of having new units in the area and always count as losing it. So you don't think bots ever commit to a crusade, huh? You're probably right. It just triggers a battle where they go and fight for a while. So the committed to crusade probably doesn't matter. Um... I don't remember reading anything about Crusades in there. I'll ask about it if I can't find it. I'll do a control F in the bot um, the bot rules and see if I can find the word Crusade. I'm willing to take your uh, your uh, your word on that. That makes sense to me. They just get the one prestige for declaring war and they say that that's good enough. Call it even. All right, so we gained the core in Macedonia. The claim in Serbia and the claim in Wallachia. Now we also get a plus one manpower token. Awesome. Forever. All right. So next on the board. Clean up. Allied units uh, go back to where they came from. Update manpower. This is where it's going to be beautiful. One, two, three, four five, six. My... I lost a guy somewhere along the line. I should have had three out here the whole time. I don't know where the other guy went. I think I must have put him into here by mistake. Anyway, I get three more uh, in here, and then I get to refresh my manpower. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these into available. Nice little big army. Now, let's see how the Ottomans are doing. Four, five. My army's bigger than the Ottoman army. That only took one war. <laughs> when I played Europa Universalis IV, it took like three wars where I had to be running deficits and relying on allies before I was finally large enough that I could defeat the Ottomans on my own. I had to take chunks of their territory three times. Anyway. How about the Venetians? They have four, five, six, which is what they currently have. So they're also good. Um, they took two territories, but that didn't really change much, huh? Oh, they lost one here. That's why. But that didn't really change anything either. Oh, seven. They have four, five, six, seven. Thank you to... Somebody who is screaming at their monitor while they're watching the video far too late. They do already score for normal annexation. That's true. Okay. Refresh merchants. I think I did. This is the one I did use my merchant. Yep. Uh, and then the pirates came in on in force. Uh, let's see. Maybe next turn I will try to uh, build four light ships during a single action. And then use them to take on the pirates and then do some, some trading. That seems like not a terrible plan. It'll get me five points. And we know next turn is going to be a quote-unquote dead turn. The Ottomans will not be able to attack me because we have a truce. The Venetians are unlikely to attack me. Because of, you know, the stuff they got going on there. And the fact that I'm not really on their target chart yet. So, let's see. Anything else that I'm missing? Remove alliances from bots and player realms from DNPRs with tax income greater than 10. I uh, think that's it. So we got to pass first player to Venice. And then we're going to call it there. Thanks for watching round two. Uh, this Saturday, I know I have to work. And we might be doing some... So let's go with Sunday evening is the next the next one. I'll put it on the uh, the YouTube schedule on the Bridger channel. So check it out. Have a good one, everybody.